Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here. And today, I got a little something new for you. It comes courtesy of my friends over at Nacelle Toys. They're bringing back a Coleco classic from the 1980s with their brand new toy line, Sectars, Warriors of Symbion. With the first wave having two classic characters in it, all of which come on a nice blister card. Nice artwork. Sectars right there at the top. Stellara, Symbion's toughest warrior. And of course, she is figure number one from wave one. And on the back side of the card, you get a nice write-up. You get nice renders of the action figures that you will be enjoying. And I have to say, I really appreciate the write-up for someone who never collected Sectars. I totally appreciate it. It's nice to be able to just turn my brain off for this one and just appreciate these as new toys. Don't forget to cut out your proof of purchase points. There are two. And here's the barcode as well. You can pre-order these now. I will have links down in the description below. Now, along with Stellara, we have her wave mate, Dargon. Prince Dargon. And he has the exact same card going on. Dargon being the warrior prince of the Shining Realm, Symbion's bravest hero, and no, you will not be able to remove these from the packaging without damaging it. They are on a blister card, and much like Stellara, you get the same write-up and a little bit of a different bio, because it's a different character. Totally dig that. You get to see his weapons, you get to learn about Symbion, and don't forget to cut out those proof of purchase points. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, they'll do something with that. But, in the meantime, uh, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new Sectars, Warriors of Symbion, Stellara, and Prince Dargon by Nacelle Toys. And while I got all you heroic Symbion warriors here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates... Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So, once you get everything opened up, you got two new figures, and each one comes with a couple accessories, with Dargon coming with just a few more than Stellara. And speaking of which, you do get her very cool-looking double-barrel Ven gun. Now, one thing I want to point out is that these are meant to evoke the old Coleco versions with a little bit more modern flair. Same with... Her dagger. And all the weapons, all the accessories are all done in a gold paint, which are very interesting, right? And then you have the Shield of Skull. And if you're wondering, yes, I am reading these off because I have no clue. But I'm loving it, right? Now, Stellara herself. Just be very careful with her antenna. I'm just going to point that out. But overall, both of these figures look to be really cool love letters to what came before. Now, with the paint, which I have no problems with, I think that she's excellently done. Very cool. I like the purples and the turquoise mixed in of her costume. I totally dig that. She also has some weapon storage. She's got some bug eyes going on. This is fun. This is definitely an 80s toy. But again, just be very careful with the antenna. You don't want to uh, break them off, we'll just say. Now, this is where I'm going to say the articulation is kind of lackluster. And I'm, normally I'm not a person of articulation, right? I like just having a cool looking figure. But while she does have plenty of articulation in the sense of moving her around, I wouldn't say it's modern articulation, which I would have actually preferred to see, right? So you do have single jointed elbows in a way, which do spin, but then she has a bit of an articulation joint that's underneath the glove, which gives her more of a double elbow, right? Which is kind of cool. And I totally appreciate that because it's more naturalistic and also she's pinless. So in that sense, I don't mind that at all. She doesn't have any type of articulation other than the hand swivel though. And coming up with the weapons, I'll show you why that would have been a little bit of a beneficial move to have a little bit more articulation or swap out hands. Now, she does have plenty of weapon storage for her various weapons, which you can remove, but then down to the legs. She does have that 80s articulation, right? She can totally do the splits. She doesn't have anything at the thigh, but she is ratcheted. And at one point, I thought, am I doing this wrong? No, it's ratcheted. They're very sturdy figures, and I totally appreciate that, along with double-jointed knees 
And then at the feet, it doesn't rock. It doesn't go up and down. It basically just swivels exactly like the hands, which again, when you want to pose her out in various heroic symbion poses, you can't really do that. Now on the backside, she gets very mechanical. And if you see right here with the elbows, I wish they would have translated that articulation scheme then down to her knees. I think that that would have looked better, especially since you're dealing with flesh. I'll show you how it kind of differs on Dargon. But overall, you get all her weapons, you put them in place just as so, you get her shield, you can give her the gun. And that's again, where I think some extra hands or at least a hand that could articulate where you could properly hold the gun. It is at a bit of an angle, so that extra little movement would have had just a little bit better opportunity in posing her out. Otherwise, if you're okay with the articulation, the paint is great. It's a beautiful love letter to what has come before. Now, I'm going to Prince Dargon. Again, you get plenty of accessories with this guy, first and foremost being his Slazor weapon. And like we've discussed, I think in bringing them into 2023, the sculpt is awesome. That is some sci-fi mishigash, and I'm totally about it. But a little extra paint, maybe a wash, something like that, really would have elevated it. Same goes for the Sword of Skull. Having a little bit more paint definition, really bringing it out, really decoing the heck out of it, I think that that would have been a nice upgrade. The Shield of Skull, this guy's all about Skull. I love a good shield with a handle right there. Now that's some old school toy action, along with his twin Ven guns, which again, the sculpt on these things is awesome. But a little bit more paint would have been stellar, right? But you have Prince Dargon himself, and just like his wave mate, excellent paint all around. Although I do like that he gets that old school paint wash on his gloves, on his shins, on the armor itself. That is pretty darn cool. As you can see, from the difference of Stellara with her flesh tone to now his black costume, that works but I still think that he should come up with a different way so it looks less mechanical. That's one thing I pointed out with their Legends of Laughter. The head sculpt is pretty cool as well. He's got the big bug eyes, he's got the antenna, go easy on those. But again, something of a different head swap or having the head be on a swivel really would have elevated that because otherwise you're just twisting him at the neck, but I love the antenna. The articulation will be in the shoulder, you can get his arms going all the way up, but it goes off to the side. He has the same articulation in the arms where he will twist at the elbow. He has that single joint, and then there's a hidden joint underneath the glove. And again, I really dig the way they did that. I think that that's a really nice way to do a double jointed elbow. Again, much like Solara, the hands will just rotate. There's no rock, there's no swapping, there's nothing like that. But again, the wash really brings the costume to life. Now, there's no ab crunch. There is a waist, which the sides where he has his holsters do not hinder any of that movement. But yes, that again, an ab crunch would have been cool. Putting the guns in is a cinch, very old school, fits perfectly. You can see that the guns stick out on the underside as well. You can get him kicking up, kicking off to the side. Nothing at the thigh, unfortunately. But then you have these knees, double jointed, of course, and then the feet which won't rock, they won't do anything except for swivel. And with the legs, they are ratcheted really well. I like how sturdy these figures are. I just wish that, let's say, around the feet, they had a little bit of a ball joint action, you could really pose these out and really do it well. Otherwise, these are a bit of a modern remaster of the old Coleco figures now with just a few bits of added articulation. But in adding all the weapons and accessories, these do make for a fun pair on your shelf, don't get me wrong. But as you can see, when you pose them out around the feet, certain areas, if you had more of a bicep swivel, things like that, you could get them more naturally posed out. In all honesty, the articulation is not a huge deterrence by any means, but it definitely would have been a welcome asset for this modern retelling of Sektar. Now, if you were wondering where these exactly scale, they're in about that six and a half inch mark, somewhere between Hasbro Marvel Legends and McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, which I would honestly tell you could go for either line. I think they fit a little bit better along with Marvel Legends than they do McFarlane toys, but you always have that 
Marvel's Sectars comic as well, if you wanted to include them. And the same thing, if you look at Mattel's Masterverse or Negatoy's TMNT, they may not fit exactly with Masterverse, but if you have an 80s shelf in general, yes, these will be a beautiful asset to anything you have toy-wise from the good old 1980s. So that'll wrap it up for my early look at the brand new Nacelle Toys Sectars Warriors of Symbion Wave 1. And I gotta say a quick thank you to my friends over at Nacelle for sending these out for the purposes of this video. They're just starting to plant their feet in the world of action figures from Roboforce to Legends of Laughter, now Warriors of Symbion Sectors. I think a little bit more articulation would be very beneficial. Also, if some of the articulation could look less mechanical. But other than that, paint's great. And I'm curious to see where they take the sectars. Especially with some of their upcoming action figure lines, right? More in the, uh, uh, the biker... Uh, mice variety, right? That would be pretty cool to see. Hopefully, we'll be checking those out before the end of the year. Like these old Galoob ones right here, right? It's very cool. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most important, remember, will we see the puppets for the sectars? Only time will tell. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.